This Thank here is our earth, and we have five systems on our earth. The atmosphere, the cryosphere, the hydrosphere, the biosphere. There's five systems. They all work in harmony. They all work separately, but in harmony, and there's not one system of these five that controls them all. If just one of them fails, the other ones compensate to recover for that one failing one or the one that's sick or doesn't function, and that weakens the other systems. This is our body. We have 11 systems. The human body has nervous system, skeletal system, digestive system. So I hope you know where I'm leading to. I'm talking about systems thinking now and dynamic modeling because these are all systems that work harmoniously, organically work together. But if one of the systems fails, then the rest compensate to recover for that. If you break a bone or if something's wrong with your nervous system, the other systems of your body try to heal that or compensate or, or uh, take your muscular system to, to do the balance. And your whole body is affected. Sometimes it just means an illness or a sickness that we can recover from, and sometimes it can lead to death. But these systems are systems that we need to mimic and start thinking about in the future that we create systems for our planet that work in harmony, that mimic nature to solve the problems that we're in. This is a statistic uh, done by True Cost in 2012, and um, it talks about the total environmental cost of EBITDA, and it talks about different industries, or it shows the data of different industries, and EBITDA is Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And in our financial world, in our world of um, economic growth, and that this is important to know. But as you see, the oil and gas industry is in the black here on the far right, is the number one for EBITDA. But if you look at the red below it, that is the total environmental cost of EBITDA, which is at 23%, which is pretty low. But if you look at the food and beverage industry, agriculture, then you can see that there's a 224% imbalance of the total environmental cost of EBITDA. And that's a disaster. That's an imbalance of finite resources that we can no longer handle. And so I hope you don't feel baffled by thinking that or um, misled that the oil and gas industry is our world number one emitter of greenhouse gases because it's not true. The number one emitter and the number one cause is agriculture, food, and beverage. And it's the number one way we can solve this, this problem. And it's through global food reform. It's the leading major cause for climate change, major suffering because of heart attacks, asthma, diabetes, obesity, because of packaging waste, because of animal production, the methane that animals generate, the amounts of water and natural resources we, we use to feed them. That is a very wicked systems problem that we've created that is since 10,000 years only gotten worse. Another thing that's vital to know is that we're eating these finite resources, but the world's first economy was an agrarian society. It was agriculture. It was the agricultural revolution. It was the precursor to the industrial revolution, and it's what formed cities. It's what gave us stability and power and energy, and we should maybe look to that as also part of the solution, not only the problem, but part of the solution if we fix that issue. More than half of all businesses in the world and in the U.S. ignore the Sustainable Development Goals. The Sustainable Development Goals are 17 goals for our planet. They're normally laid out, as you can see here, in a very linear fashion. A lot of people didn't receive an explanation what they're for, and they think, wow, these are just great colorful goals. I think I want to do them. But others don't understand them. They don't understand what's behind them or how they can contribute by doing something with these goals to make our planet better. They were developed in conjunction in um, 
2015 in November with the Paris Agreement to remain under 1.5 degrees of warming by 2030. There are 17 goals that we need to reach by 2030, otherwise we will not remain be w below 1.5 degrees of warning, warming. But they have been laid out wrong, in my opinion. I love the SDGs and I understand them. I think we should see them more like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, like a cake, a pie, a pyramid, based upon the most important things first, and that is our biosphere, where we get our resources to even provide the security and the basic needs of human health. All of the SDGs are tied to food and agriculture, every single one of them, and 12 intensively are tied to food and agriculture. And most people don't know that. Most people think, oh, that's a nice color, and we got a poverty and um, uh, hunger. But really, if we see them different and we understand how they connect to us and something that we do every day is eat, it's much more important. And the next thing that people don't understand is behind these goals, there is a number, a dollar amount, 90 trillion U.S. dollars by 2030 need to be invested in sustainable development in order to stay below 1.5 degrees of warming. That is six trillion U.S. dollars every single year. 2015, because it came out in November, we did not make even one trillion dollars worth of investments. 2016, we fell short of one trillion. And now we're on track to break one trillion, but we're still how many trillion behind? And sustainable development investment is very important. That's projects that are sustainable. That's an infrastructure that protects us for the future and our resources. Just so you don't think I'm making up this number, 90 trillion needed by 2030. It comes direct from the UN. The Guardian, 90 trillion infrastructure. General Assembly Speaker urges we need $6 trillion annually for sustainable development goals. And just to put that more into perspective, there's two paths. There's business as usual with the fossil fuel direction and dirty, non-sustainable future, but just business as usual. Let's make money and profit and not worry about the future or our health. And that is... 89 trillion US dollars. If we just continue on that path, we'll give that amount of money out anyway by 2030, regardless. Buildings need to be updated, we want to do new technology, but that's business as usual. But if we go the sustainable development route, it is only about 14 trillion US dollars more. So that little bit of investment is well worth a future that takes us well beyond 2030. And a lot of that hasn't been explained or is not easy to find, and so I wanted to make sure that you knew that. And that's private, public, country monies that are invested in your ideas, your innovations, your sustainable movements, the music industry, whatever it is to get us to where we need to be. I love our planet. I love you guys. I really believe that we are all related somehow. We come from the same planet, I wasn't dropped off here, um, and it doesn't matter where we live on the earth. If, if you live in Africa or if you live in America, whatever we do to this planet, we're doing not only to our cousins and our family, what we're doing to our only home. And there are really ways to solve this. And I love the song that they played before this with John Lennon, because imagine a better world, a world that is together where we live in harmony and let's share this world. Thank you.